Hello everybody, my name is Anne Jekyll and I am the Associate Director of New Mexico EPSCOR and a co-PI on the New Mexico Smart Grid Center. The purpose of this webinar today is to outline two upcoming funding opportunities that we have, uh, Infrastructure Seed Awards and Collaborative Innovation Working Groups, uh, both of which are due on uh, March 20th of this year. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and archived on our website so you can visit it later. And in addition, um, I'd like to ask you if you have any questions, please type them in the Q&A box in the Zoom webinar interface and we will answer the questions at the end of the presentation. Oops. So first I'd just like to give a, a very brief overview on the New Mexico Smart Grid Center. Uh, New Mexico SMART stands for Sustainable, Modular, Adaptive, Resilient, and Transactive. This is a five-year, $20 million National Science Foundation project funded through the EPSCOR program that establishes an interdisciplinary research center to address the design, operational data, and security challenges of next generation electric power management. So you can think at the highest level, the, the topic of this grant is grid modernization. And at a very specific level, uh, we're looking at how we can turn existing electricity system distribution feeders into a set of interconnected distribution feeder microgrids. There are many disciplines that are part of our current project, including computer science, electrical and computer engineering, economics, cyber infrastructure, and workforce development. Um, and this is the grant that funds these two funding opportunities that we're discussing today. And so it's a important that you understand it in the context of it because anything that you are proposing uh, to get funded has to relate to our grant and its scope of work in some way. First I'd like to go over the infrastructure seed awards and so these are um, the $50,000 awards we'll get to at the at the next next slide but the overview of this program is that it is designed to support transformative research and capacity building across new mexico's academic institutions in emerging smart grid areas and so it's really looking for you to pursue novel research thrusts that lead to increased research productivity and new external funding opportunities. And also there's an additional emphasis on increasing access to research experiences, particularly for undergraduate students from underrepresented groups. The details of these awards, um, as I mentioned, they're $50,000. They're meant to take span a year, so 12 months. Well, once we get through the subaward process and all of that, the start date's likely June 2020. And any faculty member in New Mexico is eligible. You do not have to be part of a current New Mexico EPSCOR project to apply for this opportunity. We have two tracks on which you can apply. The first is for research universities, being of course in New Mexico, UNM, New Mexico Tech, and NMSU. And both of these encompass the same scope, but the emphases are slightly different between these two tracks. The first track is really looking at projects that will produce peer-reviewed publications or additional research grants or other um, exceptional education or workforce development outcomes in addition to the student training piece. That track two is for primarily undergraduate institutions. So these are all the two and four year colleges in New Mexico that do not grant PhDs. And the emphasis on this track is really on expanding access to research experiences for diverse undergraduate students. And there's elements again of each of these, you know, good research and expanding access to students of research in each track, but how they are ranked when they come in, uh, the emphasis is weighted more on these two areas outlined here. For the budget of your infrastructure seed awards, um, all of this is outlined in great detail in the request for proposals, which I encourage you to read thoroughly, but um, we will provide student support, equipment, materials and supplies, up to one week of faculty summer salary and conference travel. Unallowable expenses include postdoc salary. We will not fund postdocs out of these awards. No additional faculty salary and um, unfortunately for some we cannot waive FNA or indirect cost rates and um, that has to be factored into your total budget. So I'm not going to read through these verbatim here, but I've outlined the review criteria for these proposals. Um, I wanted to let you know that all of them are externally reviewed. We send them out to subject matter experts. And the broad reviewed criteria is the NSF, National Science Foundation Merit Review Criteria, which includes intellectual merit and broader impacts. 
So roughly, you know, everyone will be looking at these to see how well it relates to the scope of work for the New Mexico Smart Grid Center. And if you want to learn more detail about that project, there is more on our website, which is nmfscore.org org or we can also furnish a proposal narrative upon request. For both tracks, um, track one and track two proposals, clearly specified outcomes are very important. Publications, possible future funding opportunities you will apply to, how many students will be trained, um, if you will present at certain conferences, what conferences will those be, saying what journals you plan to publish in, that's very helpful. Some additional review criteria is outlined here, but it is something that we'll be looking at is how students will be trained through these awards, um, particularly undergraduates and particularly underrepresented students, which is um, outlined and defined here, but this is the NSF definition includes women or um, these underrepresented minority groups listed. And um, a couple of final review criteria that reviewers are instructed to look at. So that's all I had for infrastructure seed awards and um, we'll hold any questions till the end. I will move on to collaborative innovation working groups, which is our second funding opportunity also has the March 20th due date um, the call is available right now. Again, the request for proposal is on our website and please read these all thoroughly to look at requirements. Uh, the objectives of the collaborative innovation working groups is to support groups of researchers to promote research innovation and integration in the area of smart grids or related areas and can also support training and learning activities activities in emerging smart grid related areas or core challenges of advancing and diversifying the disciplines that are involved, workforce training, and industries related to the electricity sector. So you can think of this as a unique opportunity to address a grand challenge that requires an interdisciplinary approach to transform an area or science. We experience has shown we've funded these through previous grants that working groups of eight to 12 people meeting for two to three days, particularly at some kind of off site location like a field station like the Sevieta National Wildlife Refuge um, have been shown to be the most productive groups, though we will consider proposals of shorter duration and with varying participant levels, uh, though we expect that the budget for those meetings would be commensurately scaled down. I provided an example here of a collaborative innovation working group that we recently funded. This one was called Envisioning the Distribution Feeder Microgrid. And this workshop gathered leading researchers at national laboratories, high level management from New Mexico Electric Utilities and other industry partners to provide feedback on our New Mexico Smart Grid Center scope of work. And specifically the participants discussed new ideas that our research team can implement as part of the research roadmap. You can see here that I listed the defined outcomes that came out of this working group that were also part of their proposal. Um, it's very important that you look at these are the questions that we go into the meeting with. This is how we will work through them. So and through a detailed agenda. And then also these are the outcomes that we expect at the end. Another requirement is that at least two New Mexico institutions are represented at these. And so here we had NMSU and UNM in addition to many industry and um, lab partners. For the budget, these will be funded up to $7,500 and they should occur within six months of receiving funding. And so you outline when you think the event will take place as part of your proposal. Anyone in New Mexico from a higher education institution or a national laboratory is eligible to apply for one of these working groups. And um, I would just say here too, the New Mexico EBSCOR state office is a possible venue for these meetings. We have a conference room that can hold about 20 people and free parking. And in addition, uh, as I mentioned, some of these off-site locations like uh, UNM Sevieta Field Station are really productive locations for getting groups together to work through things. In terms of budget for the CIWGs, they mostly fund travel, lodging, meals, facility expenses, meeting expenses, and you can provide honoraria uh, for outside experts or also a facilitator, professional facilitator. 
No funding is awarded to your institution directly. You work through our office and we help you to pay for everything directly. And we can help line up the venues and all of that too and help with some of the meeting planning and coordination as well. So the elements of a successful CIWG, specific questions that will be addressed. Um, the CIWIG proposals should be question driven and outcome oriented. So focusing on how you are going to integrate these disciplines, um, including two or more institutions I mentioned, a participant list, um, both invited but confirmed. There will be higher weight given to those CIWG applications that have confirmed participants. And there should be a plan to share the workshop outcome. So a, a report is required to be submitted to our office afterwards, but how will you take the outcomes of the workshop and um, move them forward or disseminate them more broadly? So will a proposal potentially be written that comes out, but also um, will there be follow-up meetings with industry or state regulators or public presentations given um, what will be the greater impacts of this event? And the review form for the CIWGs is attached to the RFP. That is all that I had planned to outline these two opportunities and then um, we can take an opportunity to answer any questions if there are some. And um, seeing none at this time, we will wrap this up. Please get in touch if any questions do come up. My email and phone number are listed there. And we look forward to seeing your successful proposals.